What addition did you choose to perform in study of the Ha! Okay, I go ahead. I'm going to even start because I'm, I'm really irritated by all of that. I'm not, I'm not irritated by you. I'm irritated by the publishers. <laughs> That's another story. Well, very early in our career, we were using the Peters petition. I think before the three of us, the older members of the quartet, came together, whenever we would read Chamber we did, it would probably be from Peter's edition or those right, 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 They didn't have Henley and Barrowman. The, the so-called yeah. Vortex editions. So, uh, fairly early in our career, we were aware of the early and middle Beethoven Vortex and the Henley edition, which was an Vortex, meaning that a lot of the uh, accumulation of dynamic markings and articulations from later in the 19th century had been taken out and they were presenting a synthesis of um, a scholarly edition based on several different sources, uh, which was their approach to, to Baroque music and Haydn, Mozart, Schubert as well, uh, meaning that they would look at the manuscript if it was still in existence, they would look at the first edition. If there were parts for the individual players, they would consider the markings, which had probably been by the individual players, but perhaps if Beethoven was listening to an early rehearsal, it would suggest an idea that he had or an idea that was proposed to him, which he liked. Uh, for example, in the last movement of Opus 127, the violin solo, the melody, the theme, first theme of that movement, says uh, on the G string, which I tried very hard to play convincingly go very high up on the G string. And you could do it, you could play the notes uh, more or less in tune, but to get the fluidity that's needed, it's very difficult to do that. So you then take a step back and try to consider the circumstances under which uh, a marking like that might have been written down. And Beethoven was completely deaf by the time he had written the late quartets. And he may have been observing visually what the string players were doing. And the first violinist of the quartet might have played it way up in the G string. So in principle, Beethoven might have liked that idea without really knowing how it would sound. Yeah, it might have been all out of the Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, the middle, the early and middle quartets uh, existed from the beginning of our career in the Henley Vortex edition. And then um, in the mid, late 1990s, around the time that we were recording the quartets, uh, Henley Furlock, the, the publishing company, uh, was uh, preparing a, an authentic edition of the late quartets. And we had the privilege of visiting the Beethoven house in Bonn and talking to one of the lead musicologists there, Emil Platten, his name was, and uh, we, we were able to look at was it the original manuscript or facsimile? Fact 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 there were the some original, original manuscripts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this was the material that he and his team were using to prepare this edition. So it was fascinating for us to see, for example, how Beethoven's handwriting changed, depending perhaps partly on his mood in general, what time of day it was when he was first writing out these notes. But also, it seemed to change a little bit in connection with the character of the music itself, like in the variation movement of Opus 131. Uh, there, there was uh, that variation in quarter notes in number four. It looked it was very, very neat. Yeah. It's something that you don't expect from Beethoven's manuscripts. But that indicated the kind of serenity that he had, or else really wanted the players to convey in that part. So we witnessed the development of the Henley Vortex uh, for the late quartets, and as soon as they were published, we began to well, use we them. We recorded them before the Henley yeah, Fall. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We recorded from, from the, I think it was Peter's. Yeah, but they, they, well, we had a, we did find out, because it was, they showed us things that they were going to change. There were huge changes. The, the 
the, the biggest one, of course, is the uh, Alliance of Florida, the oldest one, 27. Which is, we, we were aware of a lot of them, a lot of what was going to be there. Because we didn't want to record it from Peter's, and then, you know, he, but then the, and the, the year few months after the thing yeah. comes out, we find out that there's some mistakes or there's questions about it. So we, we, did, we did a lot of those corrections. Then there were things that happened after that, you know, the changes. And then Baron Rayer recently came yes. up with, with, uh, with their edition of it. And, you know, also based on the same sources that Gene was talking, was talking about. And there are, there are clear differences between yeah. the Well, that's the, ir- that's the, for me, that's irritating. Is because <laughs> and a, a rival publishing company comes out and they make, you know, different. And so it's, it's still, in the end, it's interpretive. I mean, you, you know, you've got to interpret the same, but it's, uh, it was fascinating. When you came up and said, well, there's no crescendo, where's that quote? Well, you know, this is what Hedley says. It's kind of crazy. So then you got other girls. Paul Paul came in with the Baron Rider edition for the middle. For the middle of the eighteens, we still don't use Baron Rider for the very name. We've got the second one. I I use the Baron Rider for the eighteen, so it's going to be seventy-two or eighty-one. Which is good. So we still further on than that. um, Yes, we will use it in the NBA edition. Okay. We've made, and it's been it's been interesting because we've talked about, like we say, well, you don't have this whatever whatever example. This, I don't have any crescendo in here. We have this in as a crescendo, and then we decide, well, maybe we should try it without a crescendo. We try it in Aaron right away. So it's kind of a mixture. I mean, I think we're we're trying to do as much as possible. Nobody really knows for sure. There's no actual definitive, this is it. That's true with many, many things. Even composers that have written that not that long ago. We also know that.